when we would call it, when we're in phase, when we're in phase where we have the receiver cut off, meaning that we have him completely cut off and now we become the receiver. That's when we want to get our head. And we don't even tell our guys to turn around. We tell them to make sure we look back and we look up because that ball is coming where usually on the outside. So we're going to look up through where it has our Big Ten at the top. We're looking up through that and that'll help us lean and locate the ball on the receiver. Until then, at any point in time, we are not in that position then we have to continue to fight for that position. And when we see hands, we've got to go for hands to get the ball. We're not really reaching for the ball. We're reaching for the opposite wrist to break down and get it out. Are you happy with the way that you guys have played the deep ball this year? Uh, no, I don't think any of us are because I, we've had our, our share of balls and we've been in position. Um, <laughs> we've had our share where we uh, we have been in position and gotten some DPIs, you know. Right. You know, that's that's out of our control. And then in some other situations where we weren't. So I think we all uh, understand that we've got to get a lot better. And we're working at it, and our guys will. I'm confident in that for sure. Um, it's not a lack of effort. We just have to have an understanding and just get it done. When you think about some of the pass interference calls, some of them I, are some of them, you know what, we're trying to be aggressive, and you're going to get called sometimes. Mm -hmm. And our... Are some of them, hey, that's, you can't do that. You had your hands on them too I think, much. I think that's exactly right. I mean, as they're in between, there's, there's some that you say, hey, you know, we'll, we'll take that one, so to speak. I understand you're in position. All right, you're going for the ball, those things. And then the other ones uh, that, that we do get called for, we feel like we're in position, uh, we don't have answers for. You say, hey, I, wouldn't, I would not coach you any different on this one, okay? We got a call, so, hey, let's find out why. And that's, that's the thing we try to do figure out try to do. We try to find out what was the reason for that. And once we get the explanation, then we let the guys know. But we watch the film very, very closely. And we tell our guys, you have to understand, if we impede the receiver's progress at all, you're going to get it if you're not looking back for the ball. And even a lot of times, if you're looking back, but you're still you know, not allowing him to play the ball. That You guys have gotten called on that a couple times. A couple even times. Even last game, right? Where right. It's you're running with him, but you're Right, and we're, and, and we're we're both running, we're both running, and now this part, you know, it's hard to say, hey, we're, we're going for the ball too. If it's stationary, they're going to always call that. So that's what we try to point out on film on the guys, that, hey, you know, you may be frustrated, but here's why. You can see it on this tie copy, or I'm not sure about that one, continue to play. How much I, of it? I think Urban had mentioned this, not to single guys out, but Damon had a call or two earlier where, where I think even Urban said, you know, he's too good of a player to be putting his hands on guys that much. Can Damon get a little handsy sometimes? Is that? I think we all can, to be honest. We, okay. with him specifically, yes, because he, he moves his feet really well and he's strong. So a lot of times when he gets his hands on guys, we have to make sure that he's getting them off in time okay. where he can get in position and not just go for the ball. And I think that's what he's realizing now even more. Tabor, is there a different way to teach corners that gets their head around? and? I mean, why, why not try that, if that makes sense? Like, have you ever done that in your career where you're getting around earlier, and what's the downside to that approach? Uh, the downside is if you look too soon, you're going to slow down, and now that guy can run away from you. You know, <laughs> um, That seems bad. Yeah, it's really bad. <laughs> uh, that's even worse, to be honest with you. But uh, we, I tell you what, even working with Coach Chiano, you know, another secondary coach, we have Coach Grinch, another secondary coach, yeah. a lot of us have the same philosophy when it comes to being top down on a guy and then phase like I was just talking yeah. about. Uh, so that, that gives you, you know, that gives you some at ease that, hey, we, we're doing and we're teaching the right things. We just have to emphasize it more and we got to get it. We work diligently, you know, on that and even more so uh, as the season's gone on. I, I know some of this stuff, is, you guys are still winning games, but and we're asking, questions as if you guys were 0-6 and, and not 6-0. and 0. <laughs> Is there anything to the fact that there's a lot of room to grow, not just for players, but you guys are working together for the first time? Mm -hmm. Is there a transition period for coaching staff like that? Oh, there's no doubt. And you're right. You know, we, thank God we're 6-0, and 0, you know. <laughs> and what's better than that than to try to go 7-0? and 0, But there are times when you don't play well, you know, you, you feel like that. You know, I mean, we did not play very well. We haven't played to our best uh, up to this point. We've had spurts. Uh, we've had maybe a game or two, uh, but with our talent and the guys that we have, and as hard as they work, I think we can just be more consistent. So there, that is some of that. After the game, you know, by the time we watch the tape on Sunday, we come in, we talk about it, we see it, mm -hmm. you know, and now it's, hey, let's, let's get these things corrected so now we can go ahead and, and help even more right. in terms of helping our guys win. Austin, Overall. Asked you, Austin asked you about turning your head. Is it true that you are less likely to be called for pass interference 
if you're looking back from the ball as opposed to looking at the receiver? I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have, we've had some instances, and I've had some instances where guys have gotten their head back, and for whatever, for whatever reason, the flag still came out. So I've gone away from saying that, okay. you know, as, as much as just get in position and make sure you look back for the ball. And, and again, like I said, more importantly, we're not impeding, not, not allowing that guy to get the ball, but just become the receiver, and now you will naturally have an opportunity to make the Because it, it doesn't seem to me that – you guys are getting beat like two, three steps very often at all. It's, you're there. It's just not making the player getting called for pass interference. Right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. We are there. And, and I think it's really like two more steps where we're completely there. And now we, the play can be made because we're comfortable. We get there, but we're still uncomfortable. And now there's a, there's a test. There's a, there's a situation where I'm not sure. As right. opposed to, I'm here, I could become the guy, and I'll have that confidence and go get it. Overall, what do you think the cornerbacks have done well this season, and what do you think are the biggest things that your group needs to work on? I think uh, just just the, the effort has been really good. I think the guys, have, they're really, really trying to do exactly what we asked them to do. There's some different techniques, some different things we are doing. Uh, we've missed a couple of tackles, but I think we've tackled pretty good on the perimeter, you know, which has helped us out. Um, and, and I would say... Uh, you know, just, just making sure we come in to work every day. You know, our consistency is the one thing that we've got to just really, really fine-tune and, and really, really get better at. And that's hard as a player. That's hard as any player. But for sure, at that spot, because every play is so different. It's like being a golfer. Every shot is totally different. Uh, and i got to make sure that I'm just consistent and disciplined with my eyes and my technique every single play. Man, zone, blitz. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into it. I, I apologize. I like to ask the coaches questions because you're the experts and I'm far less of an expert than you. So if, that sounds, expert, if that sounds <laughs> stupid, I apologize. No, 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 no. We know Ohio State plays press man coverage, right? When you're putting these corners on an island and asking them to cover guys. I asked Urban the other day, is there any consideration of maybe doing that a little bit less? Like maybe backing off a little bit or just playing off a little more? And he said, well, we're, we're working on that a little bit. Is there, have there been scheme adjustments to maybe not put the corners in such isolated one-on-one -on -one coverage could there be more adjustments or is this this is what you guys are and you have confidence in it if you get beat sometimes you're going to work on it right well we get beat we never accept it that's exactly right the very end it's, that's who we are that's what we Bottom all signed line. up for uh, and we'll, we'll have some situations where you know we will play some zone you know we will play some bail but, uh, but yes, that's, that's who we are. Our guys understand that, and they know that, that we, we have to get it done. The defensive lineman knows he's got to take on a double team. You know, he's got to get that done. There's no, there's no situation where we're going to move him a ton. So, uh, yeah, that's part of our job. That's our job. That's what we signed up for. And we can. And we can. There's no doubt about it. We, and that's we not changing. Can. And that's not changing. Okay. The, the other thing that I – so Denzel Ward was here last year, mm -hmm. and Denzel Ward is like – Killing. Looking like the best <laughs> def rookie defensive player in the NFL right now. Mm -hmm. Is there anything to the idea of, you know what, your corners are pretty good right now, but if Ohio State fans or people are used to seeing Denzel Ward, and <laughs> Denzel Ward was here last year shutting people down, well, look at Denzel Ward in the NFL. He's not normal. Right. You know, like, and I'm not saying that that's not what you strive for, mm -hmm. right? right? And I'm not trying to take anything away from Kendall or Damon or Jeffrey, but mm -hmm. Denzel's Denzel. Is there anything to the idea of, you know what, we're playing pretty well, but if we're not quite at the Denzel Ward level yet, right. what are you right. going to do? He's Denzel Ward. And I, and I think you always couple that by saying, you know, first-round draft picks, are, <laughs> they, those guys are rare, you know. And we've had uh, our share of them. And we've been very, very fortunate that way, without a doubt. Uh, but I, I'm definitely pleased with our group, and I wouldn't take these guys over anyone else because I know what we're capable of. I know they're going to get better. Uh, as hard as they work and everything they do, I, I, I have the utmost confidence that, uh, you know, we may not be Denzel-ish because, again, a, a guy like that and Marshawn, I mean, those guys, Malcolm Jenkins, those guys come around every so often. But uh, these guys can get it done. There's no doubt about it. Going back to Damon, uh, what have you seen him do well and what does he need to work on? I think he just has to work on uh, just, just his, uh, his, his eyes. You know, Damon's an aggressive player. He's a guy that's not afraid of anything, and that's how you want the guys out there. He's got confidence. He has all the intangible things. But now once he continues to put his eyes in the right spot when he's in man, when he's in zone, being able to transition his eyes, uh, I think you're going to see uh, uh, 
I don't think he's going to see him take off even more. Who's well, your best two corner? Two more questions. I'm sorry? Who's your best corner? Uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> I know I get a laugh, right? <laughs> uh, great question. Great question. As you see, we rotate all three of those guys. We really do to keep them fresh uh, because they all three have different attributes um, and they contribute in different ways. Uh, so it's hard to say. It really is to pinpoint one of those guys. I, I think all three make up uh, the, the corners that we want to program. I know um, Damon used to go down to nickel. How, how are they staying even more fresh now that Sean Wade is in the lineup? Yes, yes. And how is that impacting them now? I, I'll tell you what, from what you just said, those guys are staying fresh. We're able to have that three-man rotation. Uh, and now we, Damon doesn't have, have to take a ton of snaps at nickel. Uh, or at dime and things like that. He can stay on the outside and really, really get comfortable with the technique. Is that something where you might see the uh, the impact later in the season? For, right now, yeah. right? You get to the middle of it to the end. There's no doubt about it because uh, at this point in the season across the country, you know, you, you're seeing different aches, pains, you know, different type of injuries, and that's huge. You know, being able to rest guys up and keep them fresh, that's everything. Taver, last week, though, it looked like, I mean, Indiana's game plan was take shots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, do you anticipate more to see more of that as the season goes along with teams that maybe don't match up? With you know, yeah, with you. I tell you and, what, and how do you prepare your guys for taking shots? <laughs> At the beginning of the year, and again, going back to what you said, the way we play and everyone knows that we're going to be impressed, man, yeah. it's going to happen. Now that we've had some DPIs, we had you know a couple completions here and there, People are going to game plan for that, and we understand. We knew it was coming before. We know it's coming now. And the only thing you can do is just make sure you work your operation from the line of scrimmage to the release to the finish. And you just have to be consistent with those things and just have the guys understand that's part of it. How much, how much was get your head around, was that part of the uh, re reminding this week, or do y'all teach that technique about man coverage, get your head around at the last man, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's part of the progression that yeah. we're talking about. And our guys understand that, hey, that's that's the end all. We're right there at times. You know, we just mentioned that we're yeah. there, we're there. We just have to get around, get more, get in position, and then I get our head around, and that's going to help us. Are you teaching any differently this time now than you did your previous time here? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. I, I think uh, because a little bit of the man technique, and we were just talking about that actually, a lot of the man technique, especially press that you play, every guy's different. You know, if you play cover three, well, okay, you can pedal and open up and just, well, every guy's different at the line of scrimmage. So you really want to make sure you kind of cater to that guy and what he can do before the end all, because that's where it really starts. And that's the key. What's the one macho about playing three deep? I mean, uh, you know what I mean? I mean, what, you know, you can break on the ball. Up. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you can break on the ball and have some vision. You know, yeah. you got all these people in front of you. You know, just stay on top, and now I can see what's going on, and then I can fit where I'm needed. Yeah, but why don't y'all do that more? Uh, because that's not who we are. <laughs> that's not who we are. We're, we're macho, as you say, across the board. Really, it ain't things. So, how much has the passing game changed in college football since your last time here? Um. I would say not not a ton. I think it's just the RPO part of it has definitely changed the, the entire game within the last few years as opposed to, you know, when I was here eight years ago, whatever it was. It's just, you know, being able to those quarterbacks reading, you know, whether they're going to run it or throw it based off of the look and then get that ball in quick. So that's, that's where the press man really helps you because if you're playing a lot of zone, you get a lot of pockets that are open. Now I'm playing man-to-man -man no matter what. Those options aren't there. We got to run it. We keep it one-dimensional.